जयति पराशरसुनु सत्यवति हृदय नंदनो व्यासा यस्य आस्य कमलगलितम वाङ्मयममृतम जगत्पिबत व्यासाय भवनाशाय श्रीशाय गुणनाशे हृद्याय शुद्ध विद्याय मध्वाय च नमो नमः नारायणं सुरगुरुं जगदेकनाथं भक्तप्रियं सकललोक नमस्कृतं च त्रैगुण्यवर्जितमजं विभुमाद्यमीशं वन्दे भवग्नं अमरासव सिद्धमंद्यं नारायणं नमस्कृत्य नरं चैव नरोत्तमं देवीं सरस्वतीं व्यासं ततो जयं धीरेत माय डियर फ्रेंड्स ड्यूरिंग माय लास्ट डिस्कशन वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ह्यूमन वैल्यूज represented by the characters of Mahabharata that is Pashtamandavas, Draupadi and Krishna. In that uh, analysis of the human values, we were discussing uh, the human values represented by Bhima, 10 human values. So which are the basics for the study of Bhagavad Gita. These are all the prerequisites before you enter into Bhagavad Gita actual. Unless and until we understand these human values represented by these Panchapandavas, Draupadi and Krishna, we may not understand the heart of Bhagavad Gita, actually what Krishna wants to say. So to have a good entry to the Bhagavad Gita, we need to equip ourselves. During that prerequisites criteria, we started with Rishi, Chandas and Devata, Dhyana Shloka and the glory of Bhagavad Gita, everything. And then we are into this now. Understanding Dharma Raja representing Dharma. Just for your reference, I am just a recap. We are doing recap now. Dharma, Dharma Raja is representing Dharma. Bhima Sena representing 10 human values. Nana, Bhakti, Vairagya, Pragna, Medha, Dhriti, Stiti, Yoga, Prana and Bala. So these are the 10 human values. So I came up till yoga there. The, how these human value, how we can understand the word yoga here. Yoga is such a word as I told you in my previous discussion. It is very widely used and without any hesitation we use this word yoga for everything. But uh, this is the most important word in Sanskrit which you cannot find in any other language any substitute. Yoga is such a word where if you want to say in English also yoga, even if you want, if you want to say in French there also yoga only. There is no other substitute word for this. Then this human value, how this word yoga becomes human value, which is represented by Bhima Sena here. So Bhima Sena as I told you, I was explaining how he is very important Philosophically, if we understand Bhima Sena, then we can understand something in philosophy, what he represents. So that's why I told you, Shuddhe Bhagavate Dharma Bhima. So he is the only person who follows the Shuddha Bhagavata Dharma. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we have so many Adhyatma there, but Veda Vyasa has given us. But who is the pure devotee who is following according to the Bhagavata Dharma? That is only Bhima Sena, as I told you. So he represents here yoga. Yoga means, as I told you, we get so many definitions for the word yoga, but perfect definition ends in the Srimad Bhagavatam De Tasmat Brahmani Sai Yoga. Yoga Ittitjate Budhai. Our relationship with God. Our relationship with God, what is that relationship? How it is going to become perfect? And how we can improvise that? That is the only sadhana. For that purpose only we are here. That's why we see so many definitions. Yoga ha karma sa kaushal. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha. Dukkha sa yoga viyogam. Yoga sangitam. So these are the prerequisites or the path to understand the word complete yoga. When you reach that word, tasmat brahmani sa yoga ha. Yoga itti chute budhaihi. Learned people, they say that yoga means it is nothing but brahmani sa yoga. Ultimate and Jiva and Ishwara Sambandha. This is the most important. Jiva Ishwara Sambandha, what is it actually? If we understand, if we go to that plane to understand the Jiva Ishwara Sambandha, then this Tasma Brahmani Sanyoga. 
So that is the real word yoga there. And we commonly use this word even in all other languages. Namak yoga illa we say. That means we go the word of yoga to our luck there. If you don't have luck, if you have bad luck, then we say namak yako yoga illa. That means it is not there in the chitta of God. It is not there in the sankalpa of God. That's why Karana beautiful song is there. Nara chitta ke bandhadu lavalesha nariyadu. So the, what Sankalpa God makes there, that's what in English man proposes, God disposes. That's what we hear this. So what is there in the Chitta of God, if that is going to happen according to, even if we also wish that, then that is the real yoga. Yoga means what we think and what God thinks, if that becomes both equal, that is the real yoga. Sometimes it happens. What we think and what is there in God's mind, that is going to happen. Then we say we become thrilled to have that. So that is the real yoga. 99% of what we think it is not going to happen in our life. What we desire, that is not going to happen. Sometime it is going to happen that our thinking and God's thinking, it is going to synchronize there. That synchronicity it is going to happen there. So that is the real yoga. So the Bhagavata says, Tasma Brahmani Sa Yoga, Yoga Yitta Today Guru. So we need to get that experience repeatedly that our sankalpa, what we think, then what is there in God's mind, chitta. So if that is going to synchronize, that is the real yoga. For that purpose only we are learning, chanting, reading so many spiritual texts to synchronize our thinking to God thinking. That is the real yoga. That's what Bhagavata says. So this is the human value. See how important this is. This is the human value represented by Bhima Sena. So, Pragna, Medha, Dhriti, Sthiti, Yoga, then Prana. The word Prana comes there. Prana, that word, Prakarsena Anati. The pra, pra means again, it is a dictionary. There is a Ekakshara Kosha, actually, in Samskrita, Sahitya. We hear this Ekakshara Kosha. What do you mean by this Ekakshara Kosha? One letter abbreviation, dictionary. The word Pra means there, is a, there are different letters. What does it mean? A, Ka, Ya, Pra, Vi, Sam, Bhu, Ma, Sa, Tha, Ha, Ma. Vishnu Vajana, they say. They say all these letters, they are going to represent Vishnu only. That's why in Upanishad also, Aha, Yiti, Brahma, we say. The word A, Akara means it is complete God. That's why the Rig Veda, it starts with the single first letter A. Agnimi, Ile, Purohitam. That word Agni there, it is not meaning just fire there. Please don't go, to the, don't go to the lexical meaning there. It is not just dictionary meaning. Many people they comment or they translate the Veda Mantras having a dictionary in their hand. But definitely we cannot understand completely if you go to the lexical meaning there. It is not lexical meaning which is going to fit into the Vedic Mantras there. So Agni means it is not fire there. Agam Nayatiti Agni, Angam Nayatiti Agni. This is the etymology there. That which makes inert move, that is called as Agni. Agam Nayati. Ga means Gavana, that is movement. Aga means that force which gives the movement to that which is inert always. That is called as Agni. So the same thing is called as Agni, that is the meaning. One who gave the movement to this earth. Who started this movement to this earth? So he is the real Agni. Agni means it has got different, different level meaning there. So we need to go to the top level to understand. Agni means it is not just fire. Agni means that is also one meaning, lexical meaning there. So that lexical meaning will not be enough to understand the heart of the Veda Mantras there. So that's why Agam Nayati Agni, Angam Nayati Agni. Why we are moving? Because there is Agni within us. That's why we are moving. All our activities are happening. If that Agni is not there, that temperature is not there, then we will just throw this body. People will call this as Shava, which, you, which is called as Shiva. Shiva means Mangala. When, we are, when the Agni is there, the moment the Agni is removed, that's why we say at the time of the death, everything becomes cold. There is no heat in our body. When we touch the leg, it is like touching the ice. If it happens, means then gone. 
the agni is not there here so because of that agni we are moving if it becomes hypothermia then what happens we will not be in a position to even sit and stand so that's why agni means that is the real agni through which force we are able to carry out all our activities that is the real agni agni means so that's why a means that is vishnu akaya pravi sambhuva sakaha vishnu maj that's why that term but prana here means pra means vishnu anadhi means that which we make movement towards to understand that person or the ultimate so without the help of prana you cannot understand anything so he is the life force there so life force is represented by bhima sena that is the human value there if prana is not there that's why we say prana hoy to prana hoy to means what that agni is not there that basic agni in our body so that's why human value prana is represented by bhima sena which is the most important to understand in the spiritual path because of that prana only we are able to breathe that breathing is called as prana shakti we say prana shakti means what that force even we have prana shakti prana shakti is flowing everywhere from our body which are the two important area through which our prana shakti flows that is hands and feet hands and feet are considered as the source or the point from where the prana shakti is going out of the body to get the prana shakti what you should, you need to do you need to do pranayama to get the prana shakti you need to do pranayama it will be some people they have this habit they completely hold their hands like this on the spent for us they got to open this if they open this they feel something is flowing out of their body i have seen so many people that means they are having abundant that prana shakti in them some people you just uh, touch the heart and they, it is as cold it is always cold that means the prana shakti in them is not proper condition so this is you can examine yourself how warm is your hand when we bring the two hands very close palms we can feel that energy the electromagnetic radiation that is the prana shakti this we can transfer it to others also how by doing ashirwad this is how when we just stand in front of elders we say namaste this why do we fold our hands youngsters we cannot give our pranic energy to elders so, so this is that's why we fold our hands this is the reason behind folding our hands please know this this is scientific and this is spiritual meaning of this why do we fold hands like this it is not just a fashion to do like this when we are when elders are in front of us we cannot transfer our energy to the elders so we just fold our hands that means we expect others to give elders to give their energy when when we fold our hands like this elders what they do they do like this aishman bhava this so that means what is this showing like this that means they are transferring the energy some people they touch the head touching the head is most important these are the areas how we can grasp the energy there so that's why we touch our uh, sanyasis gurus their feet how do we touch when we touch the feet of the guru the energy is going to get transferred to us if we are eligible so you should know how to touch the feet many people they don't know many people they don't know how to touch the feet of elders so it is only through the right hand should touch the right leg left hand to should touch the left leg it is this is the secret of doing pranama they do sashtanga pranama that is a different way and when you touch the feet of elders don't touch your right hand with the left leg it is a wrong connection there again okay? so if you want to touch the feet of elders do it like this right hand should touch the right leg left hand should touch the left leg this is the only way how we can get the real energy which is being transferred this is prana shakti this is human value it is there we need to get this prana shakti regularly because we are addicted to so many habits what are the habits which reduces our prana shakti in our life that you should know if you smoke if you drink alcohol then all your prana shakti will go down definitely your prana shakti will reduce once you smoke and once you drink alcohol your prana shakti will not be there at all to reduce prana shakti there is one beautiful story in chaitanya mahaprabhu's lifetime so beautiful it is 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's one disciple. He is always very much interested in doing dhyana because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he showed him the way how to do meditation. So he was completely absorbed in the meditation. Every day he used to enjoy that meditation time there. So morning if he, he used to sit for meditation until evening he never used to get up with sins. So that much of enjoyment he could really get out of that meditation. Then what happens? If you sit in the morning till evening doing meditation, what will be the fate of the family? So then his wife went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is really written in Chaitanya Charita of that day. So his, his wife went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What Guruji, what you have done to my husband? From morning till evening he is sitting for meditation and he is not even opening his eyes. Then what will be our fate? Family, wife and children. Why he means family then? Let him go to separate or let him separate from me. She, she was actually worried and she was angry. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you call him, I will just advise him, don't worry. So she went back and she sent her husband to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, your Guru is calling, please go there. So he went, Guruji, I am very much blessed by your path or your Margadarshana. I am really enjoying it. The uh, Guru should be very happy. Oh, best, you are doing very well, you should have said. He just scolded him. What you are doing? Meditation. You are enjoying. What will be the fate of that? Then how can I come out of this? I am unable to come out of this meditation. Once I sit, I am completely engrossed there. How will I come out of this? Please let me know. Then he said, please go to some house and eat Shraddha Bhojana. You cannot meditate again. He gave one idea. Go and have food from other places or in house where some ceremonies are going on. Then even if you want to meditate, concentrate, you, you can never concentrate. You know the moral of this. You cannot eat food anywhere outside. Ahara Shuddhau Sattva Shuddhi Sattva Shuddhau Dhrasmati This is the quotation that says If Ahara Shuddhi is not there, it is going to corrupt our mind. So to meditate, you need to have pure Sattvic food there. That is the reason. When he went for some other home for having this Shraddha Bhojana, then you could not meditate, it seems. See how the effect of this food, what we take, anywhere you cannot eat. You need to completely, you need to filter, you need to know what the food is, where it is prepared, how it is prepared, who, it, who is preparing, with what mind, mentality. That's why Maka Bhojan Hamesha Bhut Acha Lagta. Why? She prepares so beautifully with love. That love you will not get in hotel food, definitely. He may be cursing someone and preparing that food. All those gunas will be inculcated in that food. And that food if we eat, our mind gets corrupt. So this is how our prana shakti to improve, we need to concentrate on our ahara, vihara. Ayurveda says this, to reduce all the diseases, it is not the medication which is going to help you. It is your ahara, vihara. How you are going to diet, that is very important. So if you don't follow this, then you cannot completely get cured from the diseases. I include another one point, not only Ahara Vihara, Ahara Vihara and Vichara also. The attitude how you show in life. So that's why all these, our habits are going to enhance this Pranasha. This is the human value represented by Bhima Sena. So beautiful it is. So let us discuss the next human value, Prana, Bala, the strength in our next course, discourse. Till then, Arivom, that's all.